Greetings, people of Earth. Welcome back. My name is Jax. Excuse the hair. I was trying to do a spiky hair look, and it looks like I got electrocuted. Today, we're doing another fortune cookie wisdom. Uh, so I'm just going to randomly grab one, and we'll see what it is. So, um, okay, here we go. Don't let others stop you from doing what you know is right. You can see it. I'm not, I'm not making it up. Uh, your lucky numbers are 5, 6, 9, 33, 41, and 49. And don't let others stop you from doing what you know is right. I think we all innately know what is good, what is okay. Like if you've had any semblance of a normal, somewhat normal upbringing, you kind of, you do create this um, this framework in your head of what is okay, what is good, what is bad. And, you know, you grow up watching cartoons or whatever TV shows or stories your parents tell you, or, you know, we, we come to the conclusion of what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong. And little kids are really good at doing that. You know, they often point out like, hey, like, that's not fair. Like, that's not right. You know, that doesn't make sense. And they have a very good sense of justice and a good sense of um, exactly what should and should be happening and not happening. And I think that transcends into your adult life where, you know, you might be able to justify doing something wrong or doing something bad or just saying, you know, like, I deserve this, I earn this. But I think at the end of the day, you know what's right and what's wrong and... I guess I can't speak for everybody, but I just innately, when I see a situation happening in the news, happening on TV, in a film, in a situation with my friends or my family, I'll hear about a story somebody tells me, I can very quickly say what is right and what is not right, what is wrong, what is not good. And it's one of those things that just comes to me kind of instantly. And I'm like, oh, that's wrong. Like, that's not okay that's really mean, that guy's a bully, that person is a liar. And sometimes in our lives, it becomes convenient to forget about that or to ignore it or to try and justify the wrongdoing. Um, for whatever reason, it might be your, you might have an incentive in your life in, in many different shapes and forms, you'll have this incentive to ignore what you know is right and to do the opposite thing or to condone the wrongdoing. And I think this is a really bad thing and I'm going to overemphasize it because I think it leads to a lot of problems when you justify wrong behavior or wrong actions. Um, let me be very clear. If you want to do something and you're a consenting adult and it doesn't impact other people, you are so welcome to do that. That is not wrong as long as you know, if you understand the risks and the complications and the difficulties, if you are a consenting adult and you want to go do something, go for it. Go for it, absolutely. However, when other people are involved, lying, cheating, stealing, bullying, um, coercing, manipulating, um, all of those things, when you're doing them to other people, you are in the wrong. You might have the most pure morals, or at least you think you do. It's wrong. You know it's wrong. We all know it's wrong. If they made a book about the action, it'd be very clear that you are the bad guy. And it's very easy for someone to say like, oh, just don't do it. Just just don't be doing that. Um, but <laughs> if that advice was easy to do, no one would lie. No one would manipulate. No one would coerce. No one would threaten or bully or um, berate or manipulate. It wouldn't happen because we'd know it was wrong and we'd stop doing it. And so at the end of the day, you have a moral compass that understands what good and bad are, that understand what right and wrong are. It is your job to try and follow that compass as closely as you can because you want to be a morally good 
person. You want to be a good person. And I know in the media recently, we have seen lots of stories of these villains or these anti-heroes. That's the big word, you know? Uh, the Taylor Swift song is fantastic. But there are more and more stories of anti-heroes, you know, Harley Quinn, Suicide Squad, The Joker, just to name a few from just a very specific genre. Um, and what these stories unfortunately do sometimes, sometimes not, is they seem to try and justify the behavior of villains, of people who have done wrong. And to be fair, most villains are just characters who experience very difficult, um, difficult upbringings, difficult situations. They have been wronged before, and so they decide to go out and wrong other people. And they continue this whole cycle of, of um, abuse and violence and difficulty. And in our society now, the whole idea of like an anti-hero or a villain being the main character, the most interesting, the one that everybody wants to be. Um, I think a lot of people identify with the villains because many of us have had trauma and difficulty and abuse in our lives and really hard situations. And we identify with that villain and we go, oh my God, it would just be so nice to burn the whole house down. It would be so nice to just, you know, rip wild and let my, let all of my greatest machinations free and loose. But you know it's wrong. <laughs> that's, that's what it comes down to, is the fortune cookie isn't lying today. We know that these actions are wrong. Um, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I'm a Taoist. So I believe that we cannot control what the universe throws at us, but we get to control how we react to it. We get to control our emotions to it. And you just have to take a moment when you're feeling that burst of revenge or anger or hatred, you have to take a moment and go, I get to choose how I react to this. I can, I can then, you know, dress in all black and decide to start fighting crime in this very unorthodox manner, or I can let this thing pass over me. I can end the cycle of violence with me and I can be a just, morally righteous person who doesn't also have to be insufferable. I, I really dislike this whole idea that these morally righteous people, oftentimes Bible thumpers, have to go out and shove it in everyone's face. You do not have to do that. Being morally righteous can just mean being a good person and not allowing the stuff that you have endured to affect what you do in the future. That's all it has to be. It, you don't have to be an insufferable loser when it comes to that. You don't have to be knocking on people's doors, demanding that they repent and convert. That's not, that's not what I'm advocating. I'm advocating for understanding that you know what is right and wrong. You just do. You innately do. I think most people on this planet understand what is good and what is bad. But we get pigeonholed. We get put into situations where... In order for us to thrive and survive, we have to hurt other people. We have to lie. We have to manipulate. We have to not be able to recount the facts in a cohesive way. And this is one of the huge problems that we face in our society today. A lot of politicians, actually, every single politician, every single big person in the news, every single celebrity... When you see a news article that this politician has said this and it's a blatant lie, you know, like it's a complete lie. What's going on in parts of the world today in Europe and the Middle East and Africa and Asia, everywhere, people, politicians are very happy to lie. They, they know what they're saying is wrong. They know what they, they're saying is leading to suffering and difficulty and hardship for millions of people across the planet. But in order to hold on to power, in order to make sure their side wins, whatever conflict they're fighting, they have to bold face lie. And you know they're lying, I know they're lying, but some of us choose to go along with the lie because we like the motive that the politician is trying to put, put forward. Sometimes we reject it and we get onto the streets and you've been seeing protests and all kinds of things all across the world about specific events. 
And so it comes down to knowing what is right and leading and living your life in accordance with what is right. It comes back to the Taoist thing. You cannot control the universe. You cannot control many of the things that happen and, and why they happen, but you get to choose what you do afterwards. You get to choose how much it affects you. You get to choose how it shapes your perception, how you interact with other people. And that is the true power that we have as conscious beings. We get to choose the reaction, you know? People suffer incredible injustice, incredible injustice. And you can choose to let it break you. You can choose to grow and become an amazing human being who makes this world a better place. That's what I choose. You can choose to be a catatonic vegetable that just doesn't want to do anything and doesn't want to go anywhere and decides, you know what, I'm piecing out of this world. You have that agency and you have that choice. And I would never judge someone for the choice they make, but I know what I've chosen. I know the choice that I have chosen and I choose to try and make the world a better place and I choose to focus on what I know is right to correct the wrongs that I have done in my life but also not let the past dictate exactly what I'm doing because I have a vision and I know what is right. I know what I want and I'm not saying this to be some, again, some like righteous D-bag who is just way too morally superior and sits on his high horse judging everyone. I will not judge you. I will not judge you in any way, shape or form because I don't think that's right. And I know that it's not right. Um, and so at the end of the day, you know what's right. You know the way that you should be behaving and the way that you should be acting. And I strongly encourage you to follow that. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes it is not the easiest solution. Many times in your life, you will encounter situations where lying, manipulating, cheating, stealing, all of that stuff is the easy way out. You know, it's the easy solution. It's the quick fix. It's the get rich quick scheme. You know it's not the right way to go. You know it's not the morally okay lesson to follow. And we all make mistakes, sure, but you get to choose. You get a choice. Everyone has a choice. I've watched enough Hannah Montana and Sweet Life of Zack and Cody to know that 90% of the situations and the troubles that people get into are caused by the lying, manipulating, the cheating, the stealing, the bullying, um, and so by just refusing to do that, you lead a good life. You lead a morally happy life. It might be a boring life in some people's eyes, but I think it's a very satisfying life. And it's a life that makes the world better. And we need more of that. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this fortune cookie wisdom. I'm really enjoying these. I think it's really fun to just do it on the spur of the moment. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see how far we can do these. And thank you so much for listening. I'd love to know your comments on doing what is right, how you, how you view it in your mind. Um, do you think that there are situations where it's okay to do something that you know is wrong? Can you justify it? Can you use the Machiavellian idea of justifying the means? The end justifies the means. I'm gonna get to this goal and it's gonna make the world better, but I'm gonna have to cheat or manipulate to get there. Um, let me know. I don't really know. I don't think so. I would say no right now in this moment, but maybe you can convince me. Maybe we can come to some kind of mutual agreement on this. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you're having an amazing day, week, month, year, whatever you're having. I hope it's amazing. And as always, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.